Hi, in this video we will be discussing about acute mountain sickness. Now let us see a sample question that was asked before in the Kohas University exam. 18 hours after arrival at an altitude of 12,000 feet, a man has headache, irritability, insomnia, breathlessness, nausea and vomiting. What is he suffering from? What are the changes taking place in the body systems during acclimatization to high altitude? Explain the physiological basis of these changes. And so for the first question it was 1 mark, for the second question 4 marks and for the third question 5 marks. So the first question was what is he suffering from or in other words what is your diagnosis? So from the question itself we can say that the person was at an altitude of 12,000 feet which means he was at a high altitude and the symptoms appeared 18, 18 hours after arrival right and what were the symptoms there was nausea vomiting insomnia restlessness irritability headache so all these point to the diagnosis acute mountain sickness so when you write an answer for the diagnosis it is always better to substantiate your answer like why you are saying that the diagnosis is this okay so that will fetch you more marks. Now the second question was what are the changes during acclimatization? So you can start off with the definition of acclimatization. When a person ascends to high altitude and stays there for a longer period, he slowly gets adapted to the new environment. This process of adaptation is called acclimatization. And the maximum height up to which adaptation occurs is 18,000 feet. Okay. So after writing the definition, we can write about the what is the acclimatization to the low PO2 or what is the acclimatized changes during acclimatization at high altitude. First of all, there will be great increase in pulmonary ventilation. So, what is the use of this increased pulmonary ventilation? More oxygen reaches the lungs, right? Then there is de increased diffusing capacity of the lung. So, all this oxygen that has reached the lungs can should easily be able to diffuse into the blood, right? So, there will be increased diffusing capacity of the lung. Now, in the blood, there is increased number of RBC and for to make the release of the tissue level easier, there is increased 2-3 BPG and there is increased vascularity of the peripheral tissues. Now, all these changes will ultimately increase the ability of the tissue cells to use oxygen despite low PO2. So, that is the goal for all these changes that is to increase the ability of the tissue cells to use oxygen despite low PO2. Now there is one more type of acclimatization which is called natural acclimatization and this occurs in natives that means those people who are born at high altitude. So for them the acclimatization begins in infancy. So in general their chest size will be greatly increased and their body size will be somewhat decreased. So what is the advantage of that? There will be high ratio of ventilator capacity to body mass. Okay. And their hearts will also be much larger than lowlanders. So this will allow their heart to pump more blood more efficiently. And the delivery of oxygen by the blood to the tissues is also highly facilitated. Okay, so these are the changes that occur in native individuals. Now what, the third question was what is the physiological basis for these changes? So first point was there is increased pulmonary ventilation, right? So why is there increased pulmonary ventilation? See we know that at high altitude the partial pressure of oxygen is less which means there is hypoxia. Now when there is hypoxia which receptors are stimulated? The peripheral chemoreceptors are stimulated. I hope you remember about this diagram which shows the carotid bodies and the aortic bodies. We said that hypoxia will stimulate these peripheral chemoreceptors right? And once the peripheral chemoreceptors are stimulated it will cause an increase in pulmonary ventilation to around 1.65 times. Okay, But then there is a problem. Because of this increased pulmonary ventilation, there will be blowout of carbon dioxide. That means there will be respiratory alkalosis. Now this will inhibit the in respiratory center. So here we are talking about this medullary respiratory center. See if all the carbon dioxide is washed off, this center will be inhibited. So there will not be any, any more increase in ventilation. But we want increased pulmonary ventilation, right? So the body has a mechanism 
to decrease this inhibition. How? So, this fading away of inhibition occurs by two methods. One is the CSF compensation, cerebrospinal fluid compensation, in which the, the, there is increased transport of bicarbonate from CSF and ECF of the brain. So, because bicarbonate is lost, there will be a decrease in the pH. And there is also another compensation called the renal compensation, in which the kidneys will excrete more bicarbonate, so that the urine will be more alkaline. This will also decrease the pH and thereby corrects the respiratory alkalosis. This will remove the inhibitory effect on the respiratory center and stimulates respiration. So, this is the mechanism by which there is a sustained increased pulmonary ventilation in high altitude. Our next point was there is increased diffusing capacity. Why is there in increased diffusing capacity? See, there is increased pulmonary capillary blood volume. Okay. And there is also increased lung air volume and increased arterial BP. Because of these, there is an increased surface area for oxygen diffusion into the blood. And because of the increased lung air volume, there is increased alveolo capillary interface. And because there is increased arterial BP, there is increased perfusion. So, because of all these causes, there is in general, there is increased diffusion of oxygen. Okay, so for so whatever oxygen reaches a lung is easily diffused into the blood. Okay. Next, to carry these increased oxygen, we've got increased RBC. So, how is the RBC count increasing? See, hypoxia will stimulate these hypoxia inducible factors. This will cause activation of the genes producing angiogenesis and erythropoietin. So, erythropoietin, we know it stimulates erythropoiesis, right? So, this will cause an increased RBC. Now, the blood volume is also increased by 20 to 30 percentage. So, as a whole, the hematocrit will be increased from the normal 40-45 to around 60. And the hemoglobin concentration will increase from just 15 gram per deciliter to 20 gram per deciliter. That means the subject will be more polycythemic. So, this, this is the cause for the increased RBC and hemoglobin concentration. Next, to increase the release of oxygen at the tissue level, there is increased 2,3 BPG. Now, 2,3 BPG will decrease the affinity of hemoglobin to oxygen. So, thus at the tissue level, it will favor more release of oxygen. So, at even at smaller partial pressure of oxygen, more oxygen is released at the tissue level. Okay. Now, we can also draw a diagram showing this uh, oxygen dissociation curve at the sea level dwellers and mountain level dwellers. So, basically the point that we have to remember is that, see for example, if the partial pressure of oxygen is around 60. Since sea level dwellers, the oxygen content will only be around 18. But for mountain dwellers, at the same partial pressure 60, here you can see that around 24 to 26 percentage of oxygen is present in their blood, which means for the same partial pressure of oxygen, there is more oxygen content in the mountain dwellers. Okay, so you can just draw this oxygen dissociation curve to demonstrate this difference. Next, you could also write some additional scoring points like chronic mountain sickness in which all these changes of acclimatization are more pronounced, which will cause much more increase in red cell count, much more increase in uh, cardiac output and thereby causing cardiac failure and uh, more polycythemia and the different uh, effects of all the enhanced acclimatization. Okay. And other two terms which are really important in relation to this high altitude sickness is haze and HAP, that is high altitude cerebral edema and high altitude polymer edema. So, if you could also add such points, it will be useful. So, I hope this concept is clear. Thank you.